Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where the Bible and critical thinking meet to give you real Christian commentary about the things that matter. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. So female Bible teacher Beth Moore recently made waves by leaving the Southern Baptist Convention, which was actually a win-win. You see, Beth Moore doesn't have to be in the SBC because she thinks it has many problems, and the SBC doesn't have to have Beth Moore in it, which in turn removes one of its biggest problems. Sounds good to me. In any case, Beth Moore often breaks the Lord's commandment in 1 Timothy 2.12, which says, quote, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man, end quote. This passage clearly says that women should not formally teach men in church under any circumstances ever. This has been the position of the historic Christian church all the way from its inception up until about five seconds ago. But just in case you needed yet another reason to avoid the false teaching and the disobedience of Beth Moore, here's a notable conversation I found on Twitter. A pastor named Brian Save tweeted the following message, quote, Dear ladies, there is no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low-cut shirts, but bikinis, bra and underwear, or anything similar, ever. Not to show your weight loss journey, not to show your newborn baby, not to document your birth story. Your brothers, end quote. This is a very reasonable request, and no doubt completely consistent with the Christian ethic with regards to modesty and avoiding the creation of stumbling blocks for your brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10 says, quote, Women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness, with good works, end quote. Now, before you quote the context and say that this passage simply doesn't apply to what I'm talking about, I will have you know that I'm well aware that the passage is directly referring to elaborate hairstyles and jewelry and expensive clothing and things of that nature. But let's use some common sense here. If showing off your hair can be considered immodest, then it is also immodest to show off your cleavage. If it is immodest to show off your costly attire and jewelry, then it is surely immodest to show off your sculpted physique, or lack thereof. It's about the heart of the matter, and it's very legalistic. I would even go so far as to say it's just plain stupid to say that it can be immodest for a woman to show off an elaborate hairstyle, as the passage says, yet it's perfectly modest at all times for a woman to wear a shirt that looks like it was made for a toddler. More than this, Romans 4.13 says, quote, Decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother, end quote. By the way, I agree that the exact guidelines for modesty are, to some extent, subjective. I believe that Christians, in good faith, can apply these principles as they see fit, and sometimes they will apply these things differently. But just because there's no Bible verse that tells us specifically how high a dress can be, or specifically how low-cut a shirt can be, that doesn't mean there aren't some dresses out there that are just too high, and some shirts that are just too low. It's called using common sense. And unfortunately, in many modern churches, this has been thrown out the window. In short, our brother Brian Save's tweet was perfectly reasonable and very biblical, and for that, he should be commended by his fellow Christians. But there's more to the story here before we bring in Beth Moore, and we are going to bring her in. You see, Brian's tweet went absolutely viral, and the pagan world was furious that he would ever tell brave and beautiful young women what they should do with their bodies. This post violated their obsession with both their own autonomy and the female figure, which are two idols of theirs, and therefore, it simply could not stand. MSNBC contributor Katie Fang was very angry at Brian's post and replied in her own tweet, quote, I am a proud member of the congregation of the Holy Church of Mind Your Own Bleep Business. You should try it sometime. My body, my choice, end quote. Very ladylike. There were hundreds of angry comments like that, and it included dozens of comments attacking Brian's marriage and even attacking his wife. This was sickening behavior, but it got even worse. There were hundreds of comments wherein women were posting half-naked pictures of themselves under Brian's post and taunting him sexually. Brian then tweeted a follow-up post in which he said that hundreds of people had been sending him unsolicited, sexually explicit messages on his Twitter account. And let's recognize that this is, of course, a behavior that the secular world would have been livid about if the tables were turned. The Me Too movement would have had a field day if it had been done by Brian in the reverse. But in any case, let's summarize. Our Christian brother, and by all accounts a good Christian pastor, made a reasonable post about modesty. The secular world has decided to attack him, attack his marriage, taunt him, and sexually harass him. As Christians, our response should be to stand alongside our brother and fight with him. We should be agreeing with him and supporting Brian in this moment. As Galatians 6.2 says, quote, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
The proper biblical response here is to unapologetically defend not just Brian's biblical position, and we should do that, but also to support the man himself as he's being lambasted and reviled by the secular culture. So for my part, I just want to say, good job, Brian. I'm very proud of you. And knowing all of this, in comes Beth Moore. And Beth Moore is largely seen as this kind, charitable, sweet woman who's just trying to spread the truth of God's word with a little spunkiness. People see her and they say, how could big nasty John MacArthur ever do that to Beth Moore? He's so mean. This is just too far. Check out Beth Moore's response to Brian Save's post about modesty and you'll see the whole picture. She said, quote, Dude, there is no world in which we ever want to see the word bra from you again. Mind your own unders, end quote. So first, let's just recognize something very important. How on earth is Beth Moore going to imply that Brian's post was cringy because he used the word bra when she literally just said the phrase, mind your own unders? I mean, seriously, just imagining Beth Moore saying those words is enough to make a hardened criminal throw up uncontrollably. But I digress. The point here is that our brother is under attack from the culture for literally just defending what God's word says about modesty and putting it into practice. And Beth Moore's response was not to defend the biblical worldview that she claims to stand for. No, her response was to join in with the pagan culture and ridicule Brian for no good reason other than the fact that he's a man and he used the word bra. This is unbelievable. Of course, Beth Moore doesn't engage with even an ounce of his actual argument here because for whatever reason she's so triggered by the word bra. It's really astounding. There's no substance to her response at all. It's just piling on, joining in with the secular world as they revile our brother in Christ for publicly speaking about his Christian values. The irony, of course, to this is the fact that Beth Moore drones on and on about the importance of unity in the church. Yet here is a great opportunity to unify with a brother in Christ, and we find that Beth is happy to help the world as they make fun of our brother for being an outspoken Christian. We know that this will happen to us in the church. We know the culture will hate us. In John 15, 18, Jesus says, quote, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. End quote. The world hates biblical values and all the people who try to promote them. They hide this to one degree or another, but it's still true. And this has happened in the case of Pastor Brian. More than this, Philippians 1.27 says, quote, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. End quote. We are supposed to wage war on the works of the flesh and of the devil side by side as brothers and sisters. How does this work practically, you might ask? Well, I'll give you a practical example. How about if the screeching secular feminists have come after your brother in Christ with naked pictures and wicked words? At the very least, you control yourself and refrain from being on their side. The fact is, Beth Moore is a practical egalitarian who encourages women to rebel against God's law by teaching. When push comes to shove, this post has shown us even more of what we already know. That as the days go on, Beth Moore seems to support the worldview of hyper-feminist anti-Christians more than the biblical worldview offered by faithful men of God, like Brian Save or John MacArthur. So let's pray that she would stop this nonsense and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you never miss another one. If you didn't like that video for any reason, then I invite you to watch my Frequently Asked Questions video, link in description, where I deal with common objections and define the purpose and goal of my channel using scripture. This channel is funded by generous donations from my amazing patrons. If you'd like to help us put out more videos just like this one, hit the link in the description or go to patreon.com slash Colin A. Miller. You can donate to my ministry there and earn tons of rewards just like these. And until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.